For people working in design professions, decisions made every day can have wide-reaching impacts, which is why it's important for these professionals to understand the intended and unintended consequences of design. Today we're exploring ethics and how they come into play in the field of engineering. Have you ever heard the phrase, what's the bottom line? This is a business term and usually the bottom line refers to money. How much money will we make? How much money will we lose? After all is said and done, what does this mean in terms of dollars? As we'll see, decisions made during the design process have all kinds of impacts beyond the bottom line. And it's the responsibility of engineers and other design professionals to not only understand the whole picture, but to strive in their everyday work to lessen negative impacts beyond the bottom line. The term ethics refers to a theory or system of moral values. It's the discipline of dealing with what is good and bad with moral duty and obligation. Ethics influence the decisions made by all people every day it's an integral facet of business, law, finance, government, and design. Individuals, companies, and society at large view every decision at every level through the lens of ethics, that is, what is right and what is wrong. The trouble is, not everyone has the same answer to this question. If you work as a design professional, you'll frequently encounter ethical design dilemmas or situations in which decisions made by you raise questions concerning morality, which usually require value judgments. Values are things most important to us. Each person, company, and society prioritizes values in their own way. Value judgments are situations in which you must assign a hierarchy of importance to your values, and often means sacrificing one for the benefit of the other. If it came down to it, would you prioritize sustainability over safety? Would you prioritize profits over quality? Would you prioritize aesthetics over ease of manufacture? These are difficult questions without universal answers. Designers must have the tools to weigh and consider value judgments on a case-by-case -case basis in order to find the solution that's best. This is an especially difficult task considering that the importance of values is often in conflict between individuals, the designers themselves, their work partners, superiors, families, and clients, the companies they work for, and the collective system of values dictated by executives, shareholders, or the board of directors and society at large, and the common sense of morality shared by the majority of people. When the values of one are in conflict with the values of another, the engineer is faced with an ethical design dilemma. Just how does a designer begin to untangle such a complex web of conflicting moral values? If there's one thing engineers do well, it's follow a process. This is one example of a mini problem-solving process that an engineer might use within the larger design process. It can help them organize thoughts, find clarity, and make a thoughtful, calculated decision about the issue. First, they need to define the moral dilemma and identify the values that are in conflict. They think carefully about the key concepts of the problem and try to see the problem from every angle, leaving no stone unturned. With the problem clearly identified, they gather more information to support their decision making. They may conduct research to obtain all the factual data that may be relevant to the problem. With the dilemma well defined and a cache of accurate data to inform them, the next step is to consider all of the genuine options and alternative solutions to the problem. It's entirely possible that the best available solution is one that makes large sacrifices to one or more of the values in question but difficult situations rarely result in a solution that fully satisfies everyone. It's the designer's responsibility to use reliable data and exhaust all options before arriving at a decision. Where important moral values are concerned, a snap decision made arbitrarily and without due diligence is not acceptable. At best, the wrong decision could mean lost time or dollars. At worst, it could mean lost ecosystems or lives. Weighing design dilemmas can be a messy and difficult task. 
This diagram is a tool used by some designers to arrive at a well-balanced solution to a problem. It employs an approach called the triple bottom line, in which the economic, social, and environmental impacts of a decision are considered with equal importance. Solutions made purely with profits in mind would be in the upper point of the triangle, without consideration for how the solution affects people or the planet. A solution that benefits the environment at the expense of profits and people would be in the extreme lower left of the triangle, and a solution that is good for workers, users, and other people involved at the expense of profits and the environment would be in the lower right. The goal of this tool is to rethink a solution until it strikes a reasonable balance between profits, people, and the planet. If a solution doesn't meet the triple bottom line, then it isn't a valid solution. Many designers have dedicated their careers to developing strategies that make responsible design easier for others. For example, chemist Michael Brongart and architect William McDonough published the Hanover Principles after a chance meeting at a conference in Hanover, Germany. This list of guiding principles came from talks between the two about how humans can approach the process of design with a more responsible mindset. Guidelines like accept responsibility for the consequences of design and eliminate the concept of waste, pose a new type of challenge to would-be designers to approach the process of design with more care and foresight than ever before. A critical concept for any designer to understand is the life cycle of a product. It's easy for designers to get caught up in the function or looks of a product and forget about the impacts that their design decisions might have at different stages of the product's life. At every stage of the product's life cycle, there are ethical design dilemmas to consider. A thoughtful and experienced designer sees the whole picture and considers the entire life of the product when making design decisions. The life cycle of any product begins with extraction. At this stage, raw materials are grown, harvested, or mined. Any method of acquiring raw materials requires some amount of energy, time, cost, and labor. Some methods of extraction can have serious and lasting impacts on communities and the environment. The next stop for raw materials is production. Depending on the product, there may be many stages of refining and processing needed to create the final product. Though production processes vary widely, all require time, energy, space, and human resources. A designer concerned with the lifelong impacts of a product should have knowledge about the methods used to manufacture products and make design decisions that minimize the amount of processing needed and that avoid resource-intensive processes. After manufacturing, products must be packaged and distributed to their point of sale or directly to consumers. Some people give little care to this phase of the product's life cycle, but packaging is one of the biggest contributors to landfill waste, and distribution accounts for the highest energy usage and environmental impact for many products. It may take careful thought and work on the part of the designer, but clever design solutions can reduce or eliminate waste generated at this phase of the product's life cycle. Once products have been transported to the point of sale, they need to be transported again to the point of use. Where and how products are purchased affects global cash flow and economics. As companies design their distribution networks, they must confront the dilemma of equity. Will their products be less available to certain people based on price or geography? Can these barriers to access be removed with intelligent design? The user experience tends to be the phase of the product's life cycle that gets the most attention from designers. But ethical design dilemmas are still plentiful at this stage. For instance, some products are designed to be maintained and repaired by the user, extending the useful life of the product. Other products are designed to be disposable. They become obsolete on a strategic timeline to ensure that customers will need to buy new ones, generating more sales for the company. Whether they're designed to be repairable, reusable, or disposable, eventually all products reach the end of their useful life and make their way into the waste stream. 
Most of the products we use eventually wind up in a landfill. This is the sad result of products being designed without their end of life in mind. Most materials can be recycled, though some are designed to be recycled more easily. Recycling materials reduces the need to harvest new materials, saving time, energy, and natural resources. Designers have a responsibility to consider every stage of life of the products they develop, including disposal. Thoughtful approaches to product design will strive to make products that add value when they reach their end of life, either to human or natural systems. To better understand the product life cycle, let's see how it applies to one specific industry, electronics. We're going to take a look at some of the ethical design dilemmas that arise at each stage of the life cycle of electronic products. The life cycle of electronics begins with the extraction of raw materials. Today's screens, circuits, and batteries rely heavily on rare earth metals. This group of elements is crucial to the production of our high-tech gadgets, including lots of clean energy and other green technologies. They're called rare earth elements not because they are low in abundance, but because of their low concentration in the earth where they're found, and the difficulty of extracting and purifying them for use as a raw material. Many tons of earth must be removed and processed in order to obtain a relatively small amount of usable metals. The refinement process is resource intensive and uses harsh chemicals which can be extremely hazardous to people and to the natural environment. This is the Mountain Pass Mine in the Mojave Desert of the United States. Open pit mines like this one have become symbolic of the environmental cost of high-end electronics and rare earth metals. The disruption of soil leaves the area too acidic to support plant and animal life. At one point, mines like this one dotted the American West, but over time, the production of rare earth metals has shifted almost entirely to China. This photo shows a man working at a rare earth metals mine in China's Jiangxi province. Clearly, the work is physically demanding, and the work environment raises questions of equity. Strict labor laws in the United States ensure safe working conditions, fair pay, and reasonable hours for workers, while workers in many other countries don't receive the same privileges. This satellite photo shows an aerial view of the Bayan Obo rare earth metal mine in China. The grayish circles are the pits where the earth has been removed. The brownish blobby shapes are tailing piles dirt removed from the mine pits and pushed into enormous piles after being chemically treated to remove the valuable metals. One of the many environmental concerns surrounding rare earth metal production is radioactive contamination and runoff from these mine tailings getting into local waterways and contaminating local ecosystems. This graph shows the source of rare earth metals since the beginning of their widespread use. For several decades, nearly all of the world's rare earth metal production has taken place in China. This examination of rare earth metal production is a small look at an incredibly complex part of the electronics industry. The extraction and refinement of rare earth metals has immense and lasting consequences economically, socially, and environmentally across the globe. For designers working in the electronics industry, the ethical design dilemmas surrounding these raw materials are a matter of critical concern. Most of our electronics are manufactured overseas. They're then shipped to the US on a cargo ship like this one. It can take a week or more for goods to arrive in this way, and all of this transportation incurs some amount of fossil fuel usage and air and water pollution. The majority of the carbon footprint for many products is attributed to transportation across the ocean, sometimes multiple times for different stages of production. Once the products arrive at stores, there are new ethical dilemmas to consider. High-end electronics may only be available to those who can afford them, and as access to these technologies tends to improve the productivity and access to information for users, there is a question as to whether this cycle of access further lifts wealthier users into prosperity 
while it further disadvantages underprivileged populations. Another issue arising out of the widespread use of electronics is the unintended effects it can have on users' social skills. Critics of personal electronic devices might say that excessive use can disconnect a person from authentic daily interactions and blunt a person's interpersonal skills. Certainly a large portion of the responsibility rests with the user and their choices about when and how to use the technology. But the designers of devices and software also must consider these unintended consequences as they engage in the design process. Despite the immense amount of effort needed to produce electronics and their high perceived value by customers, electronics have a remarkably short life with the end user. Computers, cell phones, cameras, TVs, and gaming systems might have a service life as short as one year, and rarely more than five. This is by design. These products are generally not designed to be serviced by the end user and become obsolete with the release of newer products and software. When it comes to disposal, there are several ways that electronics might end their product life cycle. Much of the electronic waste collected in the world is exported and brought to places like the Giyu Waste Dump in China. Here, an entire town of men, women, and children work in recycling workshops run out of their homes or simply on the streets. The practice of melting down old electronics to recover valuable metals for recycling has been a source of gainful employment for the town for decades. However, melting down old electronics is nasty work and can release toxic chemicals into the air and water that people breathe and drink, leading to obvious health concerns. With an increased focus on human health and environmental impact, new Chinese regulations on the import of waste for recycling have dramatically improved conditions in Guiyu, which is still an electronics recycling center, though the cost of these improvements has had a negative economic impact on the residents. When it isn't recycled, electronic waste might simply end up in a landfill with other trash. Landfills are literal wastelands, where products go at the end of their useful life. Even with ambitious programs and modern technologies for recycling, about 65% of household and industrial waste winds up in a landfill. Of that, 96% is recyclable material. Older landfills were designed simply to hold garbage and do very little to prevent waste and chemicals from entering the natural environment with runoff water, wind, or animals. Modern landfills employ technologies designed to be more sanitary in the long term, but at best, the materials in a landfill are lost. Instead of re-entering the product life cycle as a useful raw material for a new product, or re-entering the natural ecosystem as biodegradable nutrients, these valuable materials are locked away underground, unable to effectively decompose, emitting problematic greenhouse gases. Even with the most modern methods available to green up our landfills, a responsible designer will still work to remove landfills from the life cycle of a product entirely. Many companies and organizations have begun to conduct e-waste recycling programs, which collect electronic waste to be processed and recycled responsibly. Companies have an economic incentive to recover these materials to avoid the costly process of extracting and refining new raw materials. When carried out properly, electronics recycling programs can be highly effective at reclaiming valuable materials, while also keeping harmful products out of wasteful landfills. Why do you think you're offered such a great discount on a new cell phone when you turn in your old one? Ethical design dilemmas like these exist in every industry, at every stage of the product life cycle. Engineers and other design professionals have an ethical responsibility to educate themselves on the ethical issues surrounding their work, and to strive to make informed, well-reasoned decisions that reach beyond the bottom line. <laughs>